Here we go. Welcome everybody. I'm Amor, the host of your Disruption Podcast. And you have tuned in on the Tuesdays where we talk about disruption. So, tonight we're talking about physical disruption. I'm going to be sharing with you a whole lot about um, physical disruption, basically. I've seen my fair share of physical disruption, and if I'm correct right now, you're experiencing a little bit of it as well due to the COVID uh, situation we're all going through. Um, I'm uh, wondering, please share in the comments how you're experiencing the, the physical disruption. And let me know if you have any tips, because I'm going to be sharing my tips for how to deal with physical disruption. Um, but I'm going to start off with sharing a little bit about what I went through personally, physically being disrupted. And, of course, at a certain point, I'll be sharing my tips with you as well. Tonight's live stream is going to last about an hour. I'm going to try to do it in like 40, 45 minutes. And the reason why, we're, why we are doing this podcast is, in my experience, disruption is just around the corner. And um, I would love for you to learn from my experience and to um, be the best you can be in these disruptive times. I think there's a lot of disruption coming our way and we can learn from each other. So I'm offering my experience as a go-to to be able to um, learn from and not take as long as I took to be able to deal with all these changes that are coming our way. So let's start with a little bit of a story time. Let's go back to 2012 where I had my first uh, experience with disruption like boom in one go. In 2012 I broke my neck due to an accident in the south of France and so if we want to talk about uh, spending some time on a respirator, the breathing device that there's a global shortage on right now, I had my fair share of use on one of those. I had to be on one of them for, in total, three weeks because I had a very heavy lung infection. And um, I can tell you from my experience, the two weeks I do not remember because I was completely drugged out. But the week that I do remember, it's not nice to be on a respirator. So please stay inside, keep the social distancing alive, and be careful. Because if you do reach a point that you need to be on a respirator, it's not a good place to be. It's not fun at all. And basically, it feels like something else is breathing for you. And that feels very suffocating. It's, it's like a very heavy chest feeling. And yeah, besides the whole being three weeks on a respirator, I've been paralyzed for three months, completely from the neck down. I couldn't do anything but just be ahead totally. And that's basically the biggest impact I had like being disrupted physically. That's just the beginning though, because after being paralyzed for so long, I think it took me about a year to be able to move as freely as you would like to move. So today we're having the topic physical disruption. And as you can hear from my story, I had my fair share of like extreme physical disruption. But all of us are experiencing uh, the impact of what COVID is doing to us as a society as, as this is going on. And I'm just going to share a little bit of a memory lane with you guys of 
what COVID did to me. So here you see a picture of me back in the day, the, the, the blue tube and the, the white tube. Those are the tubes that are going to help you breathe in and out if you do get caught on a respirator. And uh, how do you say it? Yeah, that's not a nice place to be. So please stay inside. Keep yourself away from getting into that position. I was lucky enough to have some visitors back then. Let me see if I can bring up the other pictures. Ah, this is what it looks like if your lungs are infected, which is also not nice. So your lungs are supposed to be black, but all you can see is white on the scan. So this is also not a good place to be. And let me see. Here's my sister visiting me in the hospital in France. And my girlfriend at the time. And my best friend, Mike. Shout out to Mike. So being in the hospital for, for a long time, being basically um, completely in quarantine. I was in quarantine for about five weeks. So that means that nobody can visit you normally. Everybody has to wear this astronaut outfit and uh, take a lot of precautions because um, the, the possibility of me having a weird hospital bug was very high. And at the moment right now, all of us can have some weird bug. So we are experiencing as a society what I experienced as a individual, which has to do with the social disruption, uh, the physical implica implications. And I, I basically summed it up when I was reflecting on, on my first year after my accident. I, I, I kind of call it a, a weird way of being broke. So if you don't have any money, you cannot travel, you cannot go out to eat or drink. And basically you're stuck with taking nice walks and visiting the park and kind of weird to may use that metaphor of being broke and place it on where we're at as a society right now where we're not allowed to go on travels like the airports are basically closed down we're not allowed to go to restaurants and bars we cannot even go to the library any place that has to do with people joining together is a no-go and besides that at the moment a lot of people have to deal with the fact that they cannot visit their office or work their kids have to stay in these are pretty thin tough things to deal with and as we're looking at it right now this impact of this physical disruption is going to last for quite a while We don't know how long it's going to take before we can um, meet in large groups again. And we also don't know how long it will take before we can um, travel again. What we do know is that we're here, we're right now, and it's going to be a long run. So as I'm approaching the tips that I was going to give you for dealing with physical disruption, I'm going to start off with the first one. And that has to do with uh, building stamina. The first tip I have for you has to do with the fact that we don't know how long this is going to take. Like when I woke up in the hospital, the doctors were basically managing my expectations by telling me, the rest of my life is going to look like this, me being ahead, not more, not less. And I just had to make my peace with being completely dependent on help 24-7. And that was a really tough thing to swallow for me if I think about it. Back then, my, my reaction in the moment was a big middle finger. I was like, I'm not going to listen to what these people are telling me. 
because they don't know me, they don't know how tough I am, they don't know how hard I'm going to work, and I'm going to give it my all, and I'm going to bounce back. But that was a long-ass process, and we're going to be in a long process as a society together. And how, how do we build stamina? And if I can share one thing from my experience is, the best thing to build stamina is to have gratitude. Um, it's, it's kind of a funny way to look at it, but if you want to have the stamina, the breath, I call it in Dutch, I always say like you need a lot of breath to go through this. We, all of us, need a lot of mental, emotional stamina and, and like oxygen to go through this and, and how do we cultivate this stamina is I think a, a really important cornerstone for me was to have gratitude I remember uh, being completely paralyzed lying in a bed looking at the ceiling and thinking to myself okay uh, let me look back at all the beautiful memories I have of being in touch with people and uh, like one by one, all the places I've visited, all the people I've seen all over the world, all the love and, and connection and, and homes that opened up to me. And, and let me reach back and, and basically use that as the beginning of why I'm doing this. So building gratitude, I'm just going to write it down as a numero uno here gratitude whoops wrote a little bit too big let me zoom out and stamina for stamina. So if, if you feel like you got to reach deep to, to gather strength, uh, remember what you're do, doing it for. That's basically my first tip to deal with. See, see, I put out a question like, what are you missing most, most since this COVID, uh, how do you say it, social distancing? And I got some honest answer. Somebody said he misses women. They're friends, people miss partying, going to clubs, dancing. <clears throat> we have a lot of nice memories of our friends being close together, having dinners together, just the interactions we have from traveling, um, meeting our teachers, our spiritual leaders. All of these things are at distance right now. And the... The, the, the energy you're required to bring up to keep going, not lose hope, and, and also not feel isolated, not feel left out, because I think all of us can feel left out right now, because all of us are told to stay indoor, not to move closer to each other. It's, it's, it's really hard. It can be very isolating. It can be very, um, yeah impacting how we feel and how connected we feel and we need a lot of stamina to get through that i i personally felt like if you if you look at it on a yearly cycle if you look at the winter at the end of winter beginning of spring which is right now exactly everybody has been forced due to the climate to stay indoors a lot and everybody's really happy and excited for the spring to come because then we can connect together again uh, spend more time as a community and right now when that is happening all of us have to stay indoors more and distance ourselves so it's gonna it's gonna really uh, hit us at a wrong point because we've already gone through the whole uh, winter cycle of isolation and then now when spring and summer are coming we have to look at each other from afar and just wave. We cannot hug. We cannot embrace each other as we would like to. And the second, and the second tip I have for you 
and for myself, I'd say, for uh, dealing with the physical disruption that we're going through right now, has a lot to do with uh, going inward. So, as the first one had to do with building up stamina and doing that by having gratitude for all the moments we've had. And the second one has to do with going inward and visioning. So, a thing is given right now, we're in a weird situation. Like I had to accept I was in a situation that meant I could not move by myself, the whole being broke. I was broken. I was not broke, I was broken. I could not go anywhere. I had to uh, rely on people to dress me. I had to rely on people to move me. So I was basically locked down for almost a year. Um, on one side, I had to reach deep to, to build the patience, and that's was what you need. You need patience, and that requires stamina. But on the other hand, I also needed a lot of hope. And when I say uh, reaching inward, we're not reaching inward f for peace or something, but we're reaching inward for a vision. So when all of this is open, over, I'm sorry, when all of this is over, um, what's next for you? You've got the time right now to uh, vision from your core. So when you're reaching inward, so as I was laying on, on the bed, I was... Um, thinking about the past and all the nice things I went through and experiences I had, I also took the time to think, okay, I'm, I've, given, I've, I've been granted a second chance. I'm allowed to do it over. It's going to be different. It's going to be a completely different experience. But what, what do I want from it this time? So the second uh, tip I have for you is to take the time to vision and vision from your core. So if you're reaching inward, thinking about all the time you have spent with people, who you've spent it with, who you've moved closer with, uh, think to yourself, like, this is a time to reconsider and, and, and really vision what you want from your life. So when all the quarantine and social distancing uh, measures are over. COVID has become something that we can look back on. As you're renewing your life, are you going to continue with your old habits? Or do you take this time to really think about who you are, who you want to be, who you want to surround yourself with, and what connections matter most to you? So right now, you've got the time to pick up the phone and call your friends and message people. You also have the time to reflect and think of yourself, what relationships do I want in my life? What experiences do I want in my life? What life do I want to build for myself? Because right now, I'm not experiencing a life that I have chosen for. Right now, something is imposed on me. It's enforced on me. I have to follow some set of rules that I did not choose for. But when this is over, I get to think of what I want. And what is it exactly if I think of it from a deeply rooted place in my life, in my mind, and in my heart? So that's a very uh, introspective assignment almost to think to yourself, what do I want? Because right now something that is going on is something that I don't want. And in the future, I want to create something. And where where does that vision come from? So on one side, we have the gratitude part that has to do with the past. We have the vision part that has to do with the future, but it's also very related with your core. And as we're approaching the third one, I guess the third one is, how do I say it, save the last but not least, and I had a lot of trouble formulating this one, but um, I'm just going to take a moment 
to explain it to you. So I've been I've been through physical disruption not only when I broke my neck, but like about five years after that accident, I um, I broke my leg due to an accident in the sauna. And to tell you a little bit more about that, I first broke my neck, really refused to take a wheelchair, spent about a year in rehab, walked away from the rehab clinic because I was stubborn and didn't want to have a wheelchair. Spent about a year with a cane and a Segway, completely overexhausted my body and had to go back to the rehab clinic about two years after my accident again. And um, I had to deal with a lot of physical injuries because I was overexhausting my body all the time. Five years after the accident, I'm almost back at using the walker at home, doing more standing, using my wheelchair outdoors. I go to a sauna, uh, steam blaster hits my leg, I get a big spasm, I break my leg, I end up in the hospital again for surgery, the wound infects after surgery, and for the first time in my life I feel handicapped because I have an infected leg and I just have to spend so much time indoors and um, that really threw me back and I guess um, this uh, whole experience that we have to deal with physical disruption um, in that moment when I broke my leg it re really made me realize uh, my uh, vulnerabilities and and it brought them boom in my face so if i can uh, if i can uh, give you one last tip is 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 to uh, respect your vulnerabilities. So this is a bit of a weird tip, but I'm going to explain it to you. Right now, you might feel like you're doing okay. We're about three or four weeks in the social distancing and quarantining and all these things. And you might think to yourself, I'm doing fine, I'm doing great. I'm laughing it off, I'm, uh, I'll get through this. Um, fact of the matter is, this is a very impactful event for all of us. For If you look at history, a very, like the world has never been this connected. People have not been traveling this easily, this much ever in human history. And then boom, suddenly, lock it down, the gates are closed, borders are closed, we're distancing all of ourselves and um, you're not allowed to visit your parents, you're not allowed to visit your loved ones and just deal with it. Just deal with it. If you have a job that you can do from home, just do it from home. If you have kids that are usually going to school, homeschool them. So it's a big impact on all of us and most of the news that we listen to have to do with the financial implications of this whole situation. Mm, but we're not talking about the emotional turmoil that people might be experiencing. We're not talking about the things we miss, the things that we would like. Right now we're in survival mode. And with survival mode, it's completely normal. I myself, primary example of neglecting pain, neglecting hurt, neglecting all emotions that have to do with uh, living. And we're just kicking it off into, okay, what do we need to do as a society to flatten the curve? And then afterwards, we're going to assess whatever happened. We're spending immense budgets on 
basically facilitating uh, everything that is required for this whole social distancing situation. And I understand that, and that is a very emotional response to what is going on. But at the same time, um, we're gritting our teeth and, and just pushing through it. So uh, maybe you would like to have more contact with people, but you can't. Uh, how are you going to deal with that? Whatever it is for you uh, that, that, that's really painful about this situation right now, um, are you respecting that? That's just a question to ask yourself. So if you care about art, if you care about music, you cannot enjoy these things as you would previously. But are you doing or, or are you considering that that's something that has been taken away from you and is basically decreasing your quality of life? And that is maybe one of your vulnerabilities and that's completely normal. And how can you respect that? That's another tip I have for you, like an advice I would give you. Like I myself, I really like moving around a lot. I like my mobility. I love it. And right now, if I would think, okay, I cannot go anywhere because everything is closed, so I just stay inside, at a certain point I would like lose the juice that, that gives me life. So I choose to spend time just cycling through town, enjoying the architecture, the weather is nice, I'm enjoying nature, and it might not be what it used to be, but it's a certain form of it. So whatever it is that gives you energy, if it's taken away from you, it hurts. And I know that maybe you do not get really, uh, you don't want to admit that it hurts, but it is painful, this whole situation for a lot of us. And I guess the, the physical disruption, we might want to laugh it off, but we can't visit our loved ones. We cannot mingle if we're single. We cannot um, go shopping, just spend the day walking around in a shopping center. All these things are being told not to do. So a lot of us are being disrupted physically. The people who have jobs, who are still executing these jobs, have to be really careful. Basically, every other human is kind of a threat. So it's it, 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 there's a lot of weird implications of the, you know, how do you say it, the, the, the social distancing rules that really touch us as human beings because we are social beings. And right now we're told not to be as social as we were used to be. And um, from my experience, uh, every time in my life that my body created a situation that put me on the bench, so to say. So right now all of us are put on the bench. Every time I had that, I was basically just waiting to just take off again. So I would not want to admit that I do not like to sit on the bench. I would just like act like, ah, oh, it's okay, I'll be fine. Um, I would not admit the things that are painful about being on the bench. So luckily right now all of us are told to be on the bench, but if you're the only one who's on the bench, so the people who are like super sick right now and are like super careful, yeah, they, they feel not so great about being in quarantine or like so, socially distancing. And maybe all of us are not feeling great about that. But we're not willing to share that because we think being vulnerable or talking about our pain is a sign of weakness. Well, I think uh, community or you and your group of friends and peers can really come together because when you know you're not the only one struggling with these things, it also gives you a sense of connection. Um, as I'm rounding off the session for tonight, and it's a shorter one than I anticipated, um, I'm really happy that I was able to share some of my experiences about being disrupted physically in the form of three tips with you. And remember to yourself, 
this ride is going to be a long ride. We don't know how long it's going to take. But before we're back to buying cheap tickets online and flying to all different places in the world, it's going to take a while. Let's be realistic. Let's keep it real with ourselves. And to, to have the stamina to last that long and still keep a positive spirit, cultivate gratitude towards the life that you have led so far, the things you have, and really reach there for stamina. Look at the future. Vision for yourself what life you would like to lead after things normalize again and create that vision from your core. Right now, a lot of things have been taken away from you as you get the opportunity to recreate a life. Uh, think to yourself, what, what life is that? And last but not least, definitely take the time to respect your vulnerabilities. Um, as we're going through pain, a lot of us have the tendency to ignore pain, ignore hurt, just to make ourselves feel strong. <clears throat> For me, it was a really long journey to be able to say, ow. I would not say, ow, if somebody would be poking me. And still I have a weird relationship with pain and that's a topic that I'll be writing about and talking more about because that's a really important one when we're talking about disruption. How comfortable are you with experiencing discomfort? How comfortable are you with experiencing pain or feeling like you don't have any experience or confidence? All these things have to do, a lot to do with innovation and disruption and that's my forte. Um, but right now, in this whole physical distancing, social distancing, really respect your vulnerabilities. Be honest with yourself. What are the things that you really miss right now? What are the things that you would really appreciate to have? And share that with your best friend or family and, and uh, open up about these things because those are the way a uh, really powerful way to connect with other human beings is to talk about the things that scare us, the things that, that, that hurt us, and know that having a conversation like that will not be the end of you as a strong person. Actually, it is the beginning of you as a really brave person that is able to uh, address these taboo-like topics uh, without being afraid because you know you will overcome them. You have already overcome them. It's not like you failed. So thank you for tuning in, listening to my uh, podcast, the Disruption Podcast with Amor Muto. And uh, I've got guests coming up. We're going to do interviews more often. Please share, like, subscribe, tell your friends about it. And if you have questions and suggestions, you know how to reach me. Much love from Amor. Stay tuned for more, and I hope you had a nice time listening to the Amar Muto talk show. Let me see. I'm going to shut it down. Bye-bye.